they said smags wasn't niche anymore that's what i heard a pedestrian walked up to me and he told me that and i was like who who accused me of that who accused me of that uh, i put i threw this in a poll it didn't win but it did better than i thought so i want to do it uh but so yeah i've been recommended it on multiple different videos so i don't know like what genre this album is uh like specializes in um my, I, i'm predicting that it's a mixture of things so we're gonna see if that's true uh i'm i'm very much lo looking forward to this love you guys uh as always continue dropping recommendations and support uh you guys are incredible thank you so much for being here and yeah let's let's get right into it a little late night album listening Listening times. Track number one is Come In. Come in. Oh. those words coming from you okay we're coming into this room someone's knocking on the door i, I think the person on the album cover might might have been knocking this is the message that de they're delivering to them uh those lyrics weren't on the screen there so i'm just kind of go I'm, I'm going off the sound right now uh, that's that's not a very grand i feel like the passion that he delivered in his vocals kind of reminded me of you know something i would hear in a car seat headrest song yeah i mean that that i kind of that kind of hit me Hit me off, hit me in the face. I, I I don't know. I just wasn't expecting that energy to just be brought. So God. All right. Track number two is older than before. a 13 minute song right here i'm pretending i don't see that uh but god so it seemed like he was t uh talking from the perspective of you know the person maybe chilling in their room and that little monster comes in he's like yo come in uh and he just kind of explains to them how you know he has gotten older maybe he's matured a little bit I i'm very curious as to those female vocals at the end of that you know with with the little with the little very watery piano with the distorted guitar that was amazing god yeah that was a fucking good one that was a good one I, I hope this album continues to go in that direction where i can't really predict like what's gonna happen next so track number three is mio min mio what's the
the fuck? What the fuck? Instrumental here in the drum. You can't just do that. Come on, 2019. Yeah, this is fucking good. This is fucking good, dude. I'm, I I was not the the place where we started and the place we ended up were two di two very different places. They were fucking singing together, bro. They were singing together. The, the male and the female. They were singing. What a fucking what a love song. I I I love those last lyrics there. That it's too rare in life not to open up to someone. It feels so epic. It, it it makes love sound like this massive thing what a god bro if if there's more songs on this album that i like just as much as that then we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good thing on our hands all right track number four sleep in while you're doing your best dialogue between the person coming into the room and the person lying in the bed uh I, i'm seeing a lot more reoccurring themes here I, f I feel like this person's bed is just such a big place you know for the album you know it, 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 it seems like the place to be before we get into this long one i'm gonna open this brownie oh my god okay Track number five is My Sputnik Sweetheart. Learn some time to come in. My Sputnik Sweetheart. Learn to like nothing sweat. Many cuts from 
what the fuck? What the fuck? I love these drums. My mic cut out there at a bad time. Um, so a little bit some opera there. Some opera, we had some of that. That was nice. I could do drugs to this. Sounds like there's a thousand layers to this fucking production, bro. I want to talk about the final line real quick because I think it related to something that was said in an earlier song, perhaps on Older Than Before, where he said, If you feel so vulnerable and helpless in their arms, then what's the point in sharing your flaws? Because he, he kind of says that and he's like, Why would you give that person you know, even more power if you're if you're already helpless with them. So why would you open up about your your flaws and, and, and the shit that's wrong with you? If if you're already vulnerable in the first place, then you're just going to dig yourself a bigger, a bigger grave. You're just going to give them more ammunition to use against you. I feel like that's what he's thinking here. It, it seems like an on and off kind of thing that he's going through with this person. It seems like it seems like they can come back in, you know, whenever they want. But it's 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 just it's still very weird. I don't really understand their whole relationship dynamic, but just the energy that he brings vocally to each each song is crazy. And on, on that one, you can really hear it. You know, he was screaming on some parts. Track number six is Cut Lips. So, are we lyricless the rest of the album? Dorothy is genius.com. <laughs> This one's very, very slow compared to the other ones.
the fuck? Yeah, it seems like he's having some communication issues with this person. You know, he he doesn't really, he doesn't, he's kind of flustered in his thoughts. You know, he can't really get the correct words out. But it also seems like he desperately just wants to, you know, kind of kind of be with this person. I wasn't expecting it to go there production wise. After hearing how we started off, I don't know why. I, in my mind, I was like expecting the kind of somber, you know, energy to kind of go throughout the whole thing. So when it hit me, I was shocked, but I don't know why I was shocked. I love, I love, I love the pianos on this album. Talking about the album cover. cover i don't know if he is is that what he drew is that is that what he's referring to i don't really know in a way talking about you know the person that you know who he's in love with is kind of growing into i am very pissed though that these lyrics aren't on the screen here because i gotta use genius and the genius app is fucking dog shit and it drains my battery it fuck and it's it's because of the ads too genius likes to throw 40 ads on one fucking page while i'm trying to read the lyrics like, can I just, can I fucking read lyrics in peace, please? With we got lyrics here. Wow. Our track number eight is Watery Dreamer. The same. a pleasant surprise when these vocals come in. I'm never expecting it. Like, it's crazy. That might have been my favorite so far. The way the way that whole track progressed was just so dreamy, and I just it put me in a trance, dude. He just said, if he just if he opened up more, you know, would would they have would they have stuck around? If if he just said a little more, if he just talked a little bit more, you know. So I think he's talking more about that. I I think she, I think her vocals are mainly about you know why why does this person like me? I don't know if she's talking from the person he's in a relationship with perspective. I don't know if that's supposed to be. You know the polarity of you know the the female vocals are supposed to be the female or 
you know, in the, in the relationship or yada, yada, yada. I don't know if, if that's the kind of dynamic we're going with here. But um, I fucking love that. I, I love that song. And I, I love the distorted guitar that I was playing at the end of that. That was probably my favorite musical moment so far from this album. But yeah. Track nine is Painted Girls Theme. No lyrics now. I'm sorry. Thanks for to the production. That was my favorite on this whole album so far. Uh, that fucking blew me away. But it, is is it crazy to say that you know this kind of sounds similar to like Neutral Milk Hotel? Is that is that crazy to say? Come in is, is this is kind of a metaphor, I guess, for someone coming back into your life, someone that has already left you. So and and this person seems to not really have the guts to t- to tell them that they want want to see them again. So that's kind of what I got from that song and. The sound of it was just amazing. I love that. Track number 10 is Agat- Agatka? Agatha. Agatha, your being melodramatic. As long as you are by my side, it feels like everything's going to be okay. Okay. This is the one. Oh, what did she say? <laughs> Who her? Who her? I get that, bro. She's desperately trying to cling on to them. I'm fucking. I'm. I, I'm. This shit just cooked me. I was doing good. I was. I, I was honestly doing good up until then. I honestly thought I was. I, I was keeping it together. I need to listen to that again. I'm not going to tonight. I'm. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. But that. Holy shit! Yeah. I feel like. I feel like I'm being melodramatic now. Anyways, track number eleven. Final song is porcelain hands.
I'm jumping off the roof tonight. I'm tying two similarities from this song and the last song. It's, it's that when his vocals get really desperate, I think that those female lighter vocals, they start to come in once, once he starts to really beg for their presence. Maybe I should go back into the earlier tracks to see if that, if that carried on earlier as well, because I just picked up on that. So, because it, it, it ended off with those vocals. So, I take back what I said earlier about the lighter vocals being the other person in the relationship. Uh, they're still very much him. They're still very much talking from his perspective. Ultimately, this is, this is gut-wrenching. This is a gut-wrenching album. This is a gut-wrenching album. You know, sound-wise, it's amazing. It's be- I think it's so beautiful and intense. And I, I've never heard, you know, heartbreak like this at such a fast pace i feel like I, I i think music like this and subject matter like this songs tend to kind of be a lot slower the instrumental is you know very frantic like please just come back just come back in my life just for just just, just for a second just for a second i just want I, I just want a small hint of your warmth and that that's a crazy that's a crazy line and ultimately you know this Yo, fuck this person. Whoever this album is about, directed towards, fuck them. A lot of the tracks are, you know, he's kind of self-sabotaging and, you know, very down on himself from how he handled the end of that, you know, and he's kind of constantly reaching out to this person, you know, saying, hey, come back in my life. You're you're allowed to come back in. Raged on them on certain songs, like, you know, Sputnik, Sweetheart. But as this album grew on, it seems like the, the desperation to get them back kind of grew grew as well. But that's just what I think about it so far. I think I missed a lot of lyrics uh, towards the middle section and the in the beginning, but I think I, I started to really understand it towards the end. So um, I'm glad I'm glad about that. Uh, this is definitely one that I'm going to be returning to on a frequent basis. I'm very interested to go back and see, and, to, and just to see the intricacies that w- this album was made with. And I just want to go back and read the songwriting because I feel like I feel like there's so much shit that I missed and that i need to dive into so yeah that's all i have to say right now for this i i am i I was blown away by that second to last song blown away by that shit yeah not really a single miss for me not really a single miss for me uh in terms of the other songs of course the the 13 minute song was absolutely fucking insane absolutely insane when the opera came in i was shocked when the opera came in i was shocked but yeah Thank you guys for watching. I'm glad I get this one finally out of the way. I know it's been recommended for months. So drop drop another one that I can procrastinate on. <laughs> I will get to it eventually. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I love you. Uh, like the video and subscribe if you're new. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Have a good one.